you have seen my video of mid journey killer which is flux then you would be expecting a google collab notebook in this video i'm going to present you the google collab notebook thanks to kemandru who is known for releasing a lot of google collab notebook so this google collab notebook is going to run the schnell model so flux released a couple of models specifically they released three models two models are uh, open weights one is the dev model the other one is the schnell model and we are going to use the schnell model in this particular case I'm going to run this on Google Collab Notebook. It's pretty straightforward. You don't have to do anything. I'll link the Google Collab Notebook in the YouTube description. All you have to do is go here and click run all and then select and it's going to run. This is actually running on the T4 machine. So if you have got a T4 machine lying around, you can do this. But otherwise you can run this on Google Collab Notebook. The way it is running is thanks to the FP8. So this is running because of FP8 precision. So uh, in the same precision, in the original precision in which the model was released, it was hard for you to run it on Google Collab Notebook because you need at least 24 GB of graphics memory. But because it is at FP8, a floating point precision 8, then this is uh, managed to run on Google Collab. As you can see here, uh, I'm almost hitting the uh, 12 GB um, and of uh, 15 GB of GPU RAM, close to that. So now how are we going to do it? Uh, We're going to just click the first cell, run everything. It is going to take quite a bit of time. In my case, it took about six minutes. And then once that is done, we are going to run the second cell. I would strongly encourage you to make a copy of the notebook in your own drive in case like if it is going to be gone or make some changes. So first step, click the Google Collab notebook in the YouTube description. Second one, save a copy. Third one, just here you would see a connect button or you can click runtime and click run all. Now, after you do that, you will see the first image, then what changes you have to do to get more images. The change that you have to do is you have to go here and then select the right prompt that you want. For example, in this case, I've given Black Forest to spelling out the words, one little code, a tasty food photography, dynamic shot. And this is the image that I've got. The other change that I've made to this Google Collab notebook to get the result sooner, in, in this case, one minute is that I've changed the default height and weight from 1024 to 1024 to 512 by 512. So you can make changes here. One, you will get a slightly poorer quality. So in my case, uh, the 1024 by 1024 image was amazing. This was not that good. So we can probably do a 1024 by 2024 and see that. The second change that you can do is you can also make the number of steps less. The lesser the number of steps, the lesser the quality would be. So those are the changes that you can make. So for this particular prompt, this is the image that I got. Not very good. I got a better image before. And then I gave another prompt, extreme close up of a single tiger eye frontal view and with uh, the word love in it. And this is the image. This is pretty good for a 512 by 512. This is pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the same thing. I'm going to paste it as a new prompt here. But when we do that, I'm going to actually try to write a new prompt and then see how it is going to perform. So the new prompt that we are going to write, we can take one of the example prompts uh, from uh, somewhere else, or you can start writing your own prompt. If you're familiar with text to image models, one of the things that you can also do is you can try to copy mid journey prompts and then see how it holds up. I'm going to just simply do this prompt, a tiny astronaut hatching from an egg on the moon. In this case, uh, the hugging face spaces did it very fast because they cached the example images. I'm going to go here and uh, paste the same one here, the prompt, which comes from prompt, prompt equals prompt. And I'm going to reduce the number of steps so that you can see how fast it is going to happen. So in previous case, it took about a minute. I'm going to do now two steps and then run the same thing. So what it does is it uses the sampler, it creates everything. And then it stores the image here and that finally that image is being displayed here. So you can go to your current working directory and you can also download the image there if you want. So as you can see here, it started generating the image. So reducing the number of steps in this case didn't seem to have a lot of impact at the start, but the final generation time has come down. So when I had 1024 by 1024, it took about 33 seconds. When I made it 512 by 512, it came about like 18 to 17 seconds. Now with uh, the two steps, it is about a uh, seven seconds and you can see the quality difference. So when I say seven seconds, it's like the actual generation, but overall it took about close to a minute and you can see the quality difference. This is 512 by 512, four steps. This is 512 by 512, two steps. So depending upon the use case that you have got, you can make that change. 
and still like it's not like i've hit the peak so you can see that i hit the peak and then came down and i've generated about like five six images easily at this point in the same session and uh, my i am still not like uh, hit out of memory error so probably you would be able to run more than one image very easily on free google collab notebook again this is the schnell model where we have got four steps i've not uh, used the the dev model uh, i'm pretty happy with the schnell model in itself and um, we are going ahead with the schnell model in itself so if you want the dev model also you can just go here click run all and then that will run the dev model hope this was helpful to you in bringing the notebook to you and let me know what do you think about flux see you in another video happy prompting